Cedar Crest Golf Course was once a jewel in the Dallas area. The course hosted the 1927 PGA Championship, won by Walter Hagen. Much like the surrounding neighborhood, Cedar Crest eventually fell victim to urban blight. But in 2008, a young PGA professional took over, determined to restore its past glory. Golf has always opened doors for me. Every opportunity that I've received in my life has come from golf. Cedar Crest was about to present a life-changing opportunity for Ira McGraw in the form of one of the neighborhood children. Where this net is, I used to live right in that apartment's right on the other side, but that's the window right there. And the back door is right there, but they, they're closing and stuff. I'm about to tear it down. It's hard to stay out of trouble and keep away from it when this is the environment that you're living in. You know, you're living in a rough environment. See, there was some shooting going on. Somebody jumped out the window, and I came out, and I saw the dude running. I was like, hey, he right here, and I was 13. I know what I was doing. Lester was drawn to the golf course across the street, encouraged by the welcoming environment now established at Cedar Crest. Beautiful. We see this little, little boy just walking up, has two clubs in his hand, and has some golf balls. And he's just walking and just doing random shots, not, not, nothing proper. He was just wandering, so he might be in number one fairway and drop a ball, but he'd be hitting to nine green. And I thought, that kid loves golf so much that he doesn't even care if he's doing it right. It reminded me of me. So we let him get in the cart with us and played some, um, well, Ira and him played some holes. When we were done playing, um, I told him I'd see him around. And he said, okay, and he walked off. And I told my wife that day, I did. I told her, that kid's gonna be my best friend. I said, what do you mean? He's like, that's going to be my buddy. I said that because if he loved golf that much, then golf could do something for him. And I knew it could do something for him because it had done something for me. It wasn't long before Lester became a fixture at Cedar Crest, as golf provided a shelter, an escape from the struggles life presented. I saw uh, Big Brother. Something like that. And that's what he treated me like. I was in, the, in my office one night, and Lester came uh, to the golf course, and he says, well, my stepmom wanted me to come ask you if I could come spend the night with you. Right away, he calls me. He's like, hey, I've got a problem. Um, Lester is going through something at home. Can he, can he stay with us? I'm like, OK, not a problem. I didn't get one phone call, one text message. Nobody checked on him for four days. How could you have this kid Wonderful kid, great heart, good looking kid. And nobody cares enough to reach out. After that weekend, the bond that him and I had at that point was irreversible. Cedar Crest Golf Course had become Lester's second home. But periodically, days and sometimes weeks went by without Lester being seen. He had to basically grow up faster because he was living in an unstable household. His brothers, they were dependent on him and looking up to him. So while he was trying to go to school, get an education, he was also trying to figure out how he could get money to help the household as a child. He got in, in trouble with the law. That's when he contacted us and told us that he needed help and he didn't have any other opportunity. And it was either us or go a different direction. When he reached out to me, um, it was the ultimate test because I had to figure out if I was w willing to go the distance. After he asked, I talked to my wife. I don't think I, it took me long to answer. I just said, sure, why not? He's like, but are you sure you're ready for this change? I said, look, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll make it through. I said, we got to help him. We, we, we couldn't let the alternative happen. So we decided to do it. We, we picked him up, first of all. And you could tell he just looked so, so ashamed, so embarrassed. I mean, his head was low. He just didn't even want to look at me in the eyes. I had to, uh, to adapt to their rules and their lifestyle. I had to change my whole lifestyle, how I was. And, but not every single thing, but like the key things that make me a better man. 
I said, but from this moment on, we're a family. We're part of the team. You know, we do our part, you do your part. Today, the McGraws are Lester's legal guardians and have changed the path of his life. For just as much as we've helped Lester, it's a different perspective, but Lester has helped us a ton as well. He has. Hope he got that one-handed catch on camera. When he first came with us, you know, he probably, he had a really low average. He was bringing home probably C's and, you know, F's as well sometimes every now and then. But he improved in those grades. I mean, little by little, they started going to B's. We're like, okay, he got this. And then they started going to A's, and right now he's on A-B honor roll. Just because Lester has them in his life and he sees how what they're putting into him, he's actually putting more into himself, you know. He's actually trying to do better and trying to get better grades and play better golf. He now realizes he has a future, you know, that he can actually accomplish something. It's a kid that realistically had very, very little chance of breaking the cycle. Lester was on the edge of the cliff, basically. And if Ira hadn't answered the call, Lester would be another statistic. Soft arms. Very good. He has the swing and he has the talent to play with the top guys in the state of Texas. Now you've got a young man that will finish high school. We know he has the ability to be a student athlete in college and now he will have that opportunity and the primary reason for that is that Ira answered the call that day in a very big way. He found two people that truly love him and I know that he loves them. I was reborn here, and they gave me everything, and I want them to be super proud of me. I don't want to let them down. You, you can tell that he, he truly loves them, and I don't think it's because of what they do. I think it's because of who they are. St. James, $14. But we're, we're married. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count him enough. I don't want my brothers to be like any other my older siblings or my dad. I want my brothers to look up me, look up to me all the time. I want them to be like me and have the opportunity that I have. When I get older, I want to give them that. I will always be there for him, and uh, I think Lester will always be there for me, and um, that's just a bond that we share. You know, we're family. Man, you must really have a great teacher. That's all I can tell you. Whatever you and your teacher are working on, <laughs> keep working on, keep it up, man. Golf has made him the person he is now. Um, he's a respectable young man, and he's got integrity now. He's got accountability. He knows what honesty is, and it's, it's just great. I never knew how much golf could change a person's life. I think golf is my, my key to life, you know, having a good life. High five. <laughs> Golf has given him the opportunity to be the best man that he can be. I can't say that it saved his life yet. Um, I think that it definitely changed the course of his life. You choose to play golf, and sometimes golf chooses you. Mm -hmm.